This video begins a series on circular sock machines. Mine is a Canadian auto knitter. It's the only one that I have ever owned and worked with extensively, so you must be aware that although everything I tell you will be absolutely true in my experience, it's not definitive because by this age, these machines have acquired distinct characters. Plus, there were other makes and models, and like all machines, that will cause some variation in performance. My machine is clamped to this wonderful movable cart. It has to be very sturdy to hold a sock machine. And in one of the movies, Jack will explain to you how he made this one. The machine makes wonderful seamless socks. I just made this one. And one of the movies will be a sock pattern showing you how to make a sock just like this. Actually, there will be two sock movies. One on how you design the sock so it will fit you, and one on the actual knitting process. These machines require a lot of weight to knit, and that weight is held on to the tube of knitting with lots of waste yarn involved in the tube by something called a buckle. The generous weight is needed for various reasons, one of them being that unlike a more modern flatbed machine, these have nothing that takes the place of a sponge bar, really. The needles have an unusual shape, and they are held into grooves in a cylinder. What's holding them in is traditionally a spring, but I have substituted a rubbery O-ring that fits. The yarn is carried along by this very simple carriage that rotates around the drum when we turn the crank. This is the resting position of the needles. As the carriage approaches, Something built into the inside of the machine causes the needles to lift up to position themselves to receive the yarn. And after the carriage passes, they drop down farther than their resting position so as to pull yarn through the previous stitch and create the loop that forms the new stitch. Mine is a Canadian auto knitter. I only know because it says made in Canada right on it. But as far as I know, there is not any real difference between the Canadian and the U.S. made auto knitters of the same era. Cylinders come in different sizes to hold different numbers of needles. 60, 72, and 80 were the most commonly used for adult socks. Here I'm using a 60 to make small adult socks using a number one weight sock yarn. This is Mary Maxim Festive Feet yarn that was designed for hand knitting. It knits really well on the auto knitter. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about some basic tips for using the auto knitter or other circular sock machines. A little bit about restoration, because the vast majority that are available are in very old used condition. But it can be quite an adventure. It's lots of fun. Uh, we'll talk about making the stand that I use, troubleshooting when things go wrong, sizing socks, actually knitting the socks, dealing with the inevitable mishaps such as dropped stitches, and I hope we will be able to talk about the ribber. One exists for most models of sock machine, and I own one. Mine is not in good working condition, so we'll see where we can go with that. So you're invited to come along on the circular sock machine adventure.